Hey guys, welcome back to Tiny Fibre Studio. This is a podcast about knitting and becoming a more purposeful spinner. This is episode three, and given that the last episode was really quite focused on the spinning side of things, I felt like this should be a more knitterly episode. I have a finished object to show you. I've also got some planned projects that we'll talk through. So first up, finished objects. Ta! These are the political process mitts. They go all the way up here. And I finished these um, right after the last episode, actually. I just finished filming the last episode and I went and finished those off. They're really nice and they're a really good match for the, the yarn that I chose, so I'm very happy with them. I talked in the last episode about the fact that I might go back and rip out the last six rows of the, the ribbing and redo it in a smaller needle. That's exactly what I did and it's definitely a good move. Um, I feel like if it had been done in the same size needle it would have kind of it wouldn't have been quite such a nice fit. So very happy with those. They were knit two at a time magic loop, which is my go-to for anything that is a pair of something. It's not so much that I have problems with finishing two things, it's just a kind of efficiency thing for me. I just find it really efficient to knit both of them at the same time, and then once one's done, then the other one's done as well. But also that if I make a mistake, so for example, I don't think I did make any mistakes in this one, but if I'd made a mistake on the cable and knitted one too many rows, for example, at least I would have done it on both of them, so they would have matched. <laughs> so I vastly prefer using Two at a Time Magic Loop for anything that requires a pair, even if it's cardigan that is commercial yarn, so it won't get finished this year, <laughs> but it's uh, you pick up stitches around the sleeve, I'm knitting the sleeves to a time magic loop um, with the sweater kind of dangling in the middle just because it's to me it's more efficient and if I need to make any adjustments to the length of the sleeves or the tapering or anything then as I say I will do the same on both sleeves there's no chance of it being one sleeve longer than the other for example so definitely love two at a time magic loop they were knit on uh, 3.25, yeah, 3.25 mil um, higher, higher sharps. Higher, higher sharps are now pretty much the only needles that I use. Um, I have the full set. And for me personally, I like a really pointy, really slick needle. Um, so I knit fairly fast and um, I've tried Chowgoos and Knit Pros as well, and Higher Higher is definitely my favourite. Chowgoos I quite liked, but I didn't like the red lace cable. It was, wasn't was flexible enough for me. Maybe fine for the body of a sweater, but once you start having to manipulate the cable a lot, I found that the joins came undone fairly easily. That's my experience. Yours will probably vary, you can tell me which, uh, which needles you prefer. So, that's my first finished object of Handspun 17. And I'm happy to have actually done something with that yarn that's been in my stash for two years. Um, it was a good, even yarn, and I'm really happy that I've actually done something with it. Speaking of things that have been in my stash for two years, this is some um, Handspun Shetland and I could have sworn when I originally finished this that it was Aran weight. I actually made like half the body of a jumper believing that it was Aran weight or convincing myself that it was Aran weight more likely um, before I realised that this does not want to be iron weight, it's more like a DK, if anything else. So I'm just swatching with a few different sizes of needles now to try and figure out what gauge this wants to be before I decide what I want to do with it. There's actually three different colours, 
So I have the white and then a sort of fawn and a medium brown. So I would like those to be together in a sweater, either as stripes or possibly as ferrile. I don't know. I'm going to have to wait and see what the gauge comes out as um, and then have a little look and see what patterns I think might work for it. I might do something like adapting the blank canvas pattern by Isolde Teague. Um, I use a lot of Isolde's patterns just because they happen to end up fitting me really well without too much adjustment. So I may look at doing something like that if nothing else grabs me. So I'm currently swatching with, I think these are three and a half mil needles. Yep. Uh, so three and a half mil is uh, US four. I don't know the US sizes off by heart by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it's pretty good. I think I might want it to be a bit more drapey though. So I'll see what happens if I go up to um, a 375 or a 4. Um, but it's nice to have something to swatch. I'm still spinning the second and third plies of this. So I finished this single um, before the last episode and I'm still working on the other two singles. In the meantime though I want to try and make sure that I'm planning ahead so that when I finish spinning that one I can then start spinning my next project. So I'm dyeing fibre at the moment for the next project which is going to be Stephen West's The Doodler. So I've dyed a couple of colours so far there's one more colour to go. So the first one is this, which is a kind of goldy, mustardy, slightly mustardy, goldy colour. I quite like that one. I might over dye it a little bit just to get some of the lighter areas a little bit more consistent. You can see there's some fairly light bits around here. So I may over dye that to get the colours a little bit darker. But in general, I like that colour. And then the second colour that I've dyed up is this one, which is kind of a really dark, inky, bluey black. It was uh, Jacquard Silver Grey over dyed with black. And I think those two, you guys should let me know. <laughs> Do you think these two work well together as two of the colours for the doodler. The other colour that I'm thinking of is probably just going to be a grey, hopefully kind of similar to the grey in this. So if you think that will work, drop me a comment, let me know. These are Shetland. Um, I'm probably going to be spinning those two ply to get the most uh, yardage out of it. Um, I divided the fibre up in a really unscientific fashion. So I had 414 grams of Shetland available. From the amounts that are listed on the project page for the doodler, I figured, yeah, I think I can get the yardage that I need from it. But I need to divide the yarn pretty caref carefully to make sure that I've got the best chance of getting the most yardage for each of the colours. So I added up all of the yardages of the yarns that were used on the pattern page, then uh, sort of divided it proportionally so that I would have the same proportions from that 414 grams. So hopefully I will get enough yardage. Um, this by the way is not all of this colour, um, the rest of it is still drying so don't think that I'm trying to miraculously get 200 odd yards out of this because that's not going to happen. <laughs> so that's going to be the dealer and um, I'll keep you updated with my progress on that one.
So now a couple of acquisitions. Um, generally in this podcast, you're not going to see a lot of acquisitions or stash enhancement because let's face it, the whole point is I'm spinning from my stash, both my fibre stash and my hand spun stash uh, for knitting. So I'm not going to be out buying tons of commercial yarn. Um, however, I've had a week off this week which is great, it's allowed me to do lots of creative stuff that I don't always get time to do and it's also a real temptation to order lots of stuff that I'm normally not in to receive deliveries of. So I did order something at the beginning of the week and it's just arrived, literally just arrived this morning so I haven't really had a chance to have a proper look through it but that is the Spinner's Book of Fleece by Beth Smith. Um, I haven't really had that much of a chance to flick through it, um, but I'll just open a page at random, we'll see what we get. Exciting. Um, I had, the reason I got this was I had a Waterstones voucher for Christmas, and the only thing that I could think of that was uh, missing from my library of spinning books was this one. I was a little bit concerned about whether it would cross over too much with the Fleece and Fibre source book, which I also have, um, but I don't think it does. I think this goes much more in depth about how to actually spin various different breeds, whereas the Fleece and Fibre source book is a much more general kind of these are the good properties of these uh, fibres. I think that's the case. As I say, I will give this a bit more of a, a read through and then I'll review it properly in a future episode. And then the other thing that I found this week which has made me very, very happy is this. <laughs> Super cute little sheepy cushion. Love it. With one exception that I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, this is from Dunelm in the UK. They're kind of like a, a home furnishing slash home decor store. And I saw this on their website and ran down to the local Dunelm, which is just down the road, and picked one up. The only thing that I don't like is why do they insist on putting fun fur on everything? All this fake fur. Why? Why, why do you insist on doing that? It's just going to look really um, horrible and worn after a really short time. So when, <laughs> when I was in the shop, I actually opened it all up. I took the inner cushion out and looked at how it was constructed inside so that I could see whether it'd be easy to um, take apart and replace the back panel. Looks like it should be fairly straightforward. So that will probably happen at some time. I've even thought about maybe weaving a back panel for it. I haven't touched my weaving loom in about 18 months, so maybe that won't happen, but we'll see. So yeah, done now. Uh, super cute, sheepy cushion uh, if you're a knitter or a spinner and you have access to done it, then this might be something on your shopping list. I love it, it's cute. I also have an order coming in from Acreworks. I'm tracking the shipping at the moment. Um, like a complete stalker because I'm very excited about getting that parcel. I'm not even going to tell you what's in there so there's a little bit of a surprise. If you follow me on Instagram you'll probably know already because I did mention it on there. But what else has been happening? I had the most amazing fibery day with wonderful fabulous fibery people the other day and I can't really tell you any more about that. Um, <laughs> It was kind of connected with somebody else's work and so it's not appropriate to share that until a certain time frame has passed. Uh, I did shoot some video though, so when I'm able to share that I will do. But just know that it was a really really lovely day, thoroughly enjoyed myself and um, I'm looking forward to being able to share that with you. So I was kind of reflecting the other day on this whole handspun 17 thing and I realised that I really haven't been particularly tempted to pick up any of my commercial stash or 
even to knit on projects that I've already started, I know that's going to kind of gnaw away at me, knowing that I can't finish those for the next year. But I have plenty of other stuff to be working on. I guess part of this whole thing is that kind of instant gratification that you can get by just going into your stash, finding, you know, a commercial yarn, um, looking up a pattern on Ravelry and just getting started. I'm actually quite enjoying the planning process though. I'm enjoying things like dyeing up the fibre for the doodler and thinking about how that's going to look in the end. I'm sure I will do a lot more of that in the next year. But that's an element that I've been really enjoying. One of the other yarns from my stash that I really, really want to do something with is this one. So it's actually a gradient, if I unravel this. Um, it's a gradient two-ply and it goes from pink to grey to turquoise or vice versa, who knows. And there's not enough of it to be a two-ply scarf or shawl or anything like that. Um, so let me know if you are aware of any patterns that it might be good for. Um, I'm thinking about, I've seen somewhere it's kind of most of the shawl is in one solid colour, but then there's a gradient yarn that kind of goes, um, is kind of shot through the shawl as well. So let me know if you have a favourite of those because I'm kind of interested in doing something interesting with this skein, but there's just not quite enough for it to be something all on its own. So let me know if you know any ideas for this one. I've realised that I should also probably introduce the uh, knitted garments and accessories that I'm wearing at the beginning of each episode. This is the Dreambird Cal, um, which I love. It's kind of huge, but I do love it. Um, the pattern's quite confusingly written in places, I will say that much. I found my own way of doing it, which worked for me, but it was kind of confusing to start with. If you haven't come across any of this type of shawl before, um, these are all short rows. It's pretty easy mindless knitting once you've got used to the pattern, once you've done a couple of the feathers, then you would be absolutely fine. But just those, those first couple of feathers take a little bit of getting used to. Underneath we've got Chickadee by Isolde Teague. This is probably one of my most worn knits and I really at some point I need to take these buttons off and just reposition them a little bit further in because over time the buttons buttonholes have kind of stretched a little bit and uh, they just need pulling across a little bit because this this has a bit of a tendency to gape open. Not too much of a problem, but I do I do love this. This is in um, Rowan felted tweed, um, and it's it's actually worn really really well. There's some nylon in felted tweed, which probably helps a little bit. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm wearing today. So once again, thank you very much for joining me on Tiny Fibre Studio. I hope that that's been a useful, interesting episode for you. I will continue to keep you up to date on Instagram as Tiny Fibre Studio, on Ravelry as Ibex, and also in the Tiny Fibre Studio group on Ravelry as well. So you can get in touch with me in any of those places, or the easiest option is to just leave a comment on YouTube. I try to answer all of my YouTube comments. So Please let me know if there is anything that you'd like me to cover or um, any questions that you might have and I will do my best to take those requests on board. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.